Now let's uh, try and uh, evaluate one more uh, function for its uh, maxima minima. And uh, one of the things uh, that you observe here is that this is not a symmetric function. But however, one uh, situation could arise where you could have, uh, you know, the set of points repeated with opposite sign. Say, for example, you have x comma y as one point. You can also have minus x comma minus y as another set of point. Then, do you have to evaluate the Hazian twice or only once would suffice? which determines on the nature of uh, the determinant of the Hazian, that is in terms of x and y, right? The uh, determinant of the Hazian in terms of x and y, if uh, has got uh, a symmetric function, then you will have to evaluate it only once. We will see that, uh, but that is uh, one of the uh, features of uh, this particular investigation. So, what is uh, step number one? Step number one is very simple, first equate the partial derivatives of the function with respect to x and y because those are the two independent variables. So, to 0, so which uh, impl implies here that uh, when you differentiate the first term with respect to x, it is going to be 6x square and what about the next one? It is going to be 6y square and uh, what about the next term gets knocked out because uh, y is not f uh, y is a constant is not uh, has got nothing to do with x and uh, then minus uh, 150 you will have and that is equal to 0 now if i divide both the sides by 6 what would i have i would have x square plus y square and that is equal to uh, 150 divided by 6 is 25 so, this you can call as equation 1. Now, uh, I can use the simplified function. That is, if I divide this throughout by 6, I will have x square plus y square minus uh, 25 equal to 0, the simplified function. I can directly use that to construct my Hazian. That is, I can use that function to evaluate my second derivative and hence construct my Hazian. That would not affect the nature of determinant. Why? Because every uh, uh, term that uh, gets into your Hazian would be factored by the same. So, therefore, if you are dividing this by 6 and getting one more function and then that you are using for evaluating your Hazian, you do not have to worry, you can directly use. Otherwise, also uh, you can uh, uh, use uh, uh, whatever equation you have got and follow the regular procedure, it does not matter. Now, I have got equation 1 and what about the next equation? The next equation would be the partial derivative of the function with respect to y that is equal to 0 which implies that if I differentiate the function with respect to y, the first term gets knocked out and the second term would be 12xy and uh, what about the third term? The third term would be minus uh, that is uh, 9 y square because you are differentiating partially with respect to y. So, there is 3. So, power 3 multiplies that it becomes 9 and becomes 9 y square and the last term again gets knocked out. So, therefore, you have uh, 12 x y minus 9 y square is equal to 0 and what I can do as usual is divide both the sides by 3. I am going to have 4 x y and uh, minus uh, this is going to be 3 y square and that is equal to 0. You can call this uh, equation number 2. right? So, this equation can be recast because uh, I can take y outside. I have 4 x minus 3 y that is equal to 0 and uh, therefore, the two possibilities are y is equal to 0 possibility number 1. And the possibility number 2 is uh, 4x is equal to 3y. So, each of these conditions must be substituted here to get the points. So, let us uh, do one by one 4x equal to 3y, y equal to 0 you got from equation 2, x square plus y square is equal to 25 from equation 1. Let us see what happens next. Now, the first condition is x square plus y square is equal to 25 condition 1. The second condition is y is equal to 0 and what about the third condition? You clearly got 4x is equal to 
थ्री वाई फोर एक्स इज इक्वल टू थ्री वाई क्लियर सो दीज टू कंडीशन गॉट बाई इक्वेटिंग द फर्स्ट डिरेवेटिव ऑफ फंक्शन विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू वाई एंड दिस कंडीशन गॉट बाई डिफरेंशिएटिंग द फंक्शन विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू एक्स पार्शियली सो नाउ आई एम गोइंग टू सब्सटीट्यूट वन बाय वन सो वाई इज इक्वल टू जीरो इज माई फर्स्ट पॉइंट दैट इज आई कैन पोट हिया my first two points because this is quadratic uh, don't forget that so if i put y equal to 0 in this i'm going to get uh, two values of x because it is quadratic that is why i wrote two points okay so if i put y equal to 0 i get x square is equal to 25 and that means uh, x can be equal to plus r minus y do it systematically uh you list conditions uh, that you get from the first uh, equating the first derivative to zero write the conditions that you get from the second derivative is equal to zero separately and start uh, putting one condition in the other and start constructing the points what did i do i put y, y equal to zero in this i know that two possibilities uh, for x exists that is one is plus y another is minus y so y is zero is the only condition that i am taking there so therefore uh, it could be y comma 0 minus y comma 0 right so two points have been got now depending on the nature of the hesian you can you, you may have to test the hesian's determinant for only one point okay now let's come back i have got one more uh, condition that is 4x is equal to 3y so let me substitute in this particular equation so what does that uh, lead me to that is it is saying that 4x by 3 is equal to y as simple as that so if i substitute here i get x square plus y square is going to be replaced by 16 x square by 9 and that is equal to 25 now it's very simple if i simplify i'll get 25 x square note that 16 plus 9 is 25 and that is equal to 25 into 9 25 25 would get cancelled and x would be plus r minus 3 right so plus r minus 3 now i have got a condition here y is equal to 4x by 3 so when i put x is equal to plus 3 what i would get i would get y is equal to 4 and minus 3 what i would get x is equal to minus 3 that is equal to y So three three would get cancelled. I'll get minus four. So when it is plus, you have got plus. When it is minus, you have got minus. So can I write the other set of points? So when x is equal to plus three, you have got y is equal to four, and x is equal to minus three, you have got minus four. You see here the beauty of the problem is. uh the two set of points just have got opposite signs but numbers are the same this is a plus y 0 0 doesn't have a sign so it is minus y 0 just exactly negative and 3 4 negative of that minus 3 minus 4 so investigating for the hesian is going to be pretty easy now i need to construct my hesian before i start uh, investigating for the nature of uh, the determinant of the hesian so let me go back and pick up my first derivative so that if i differentiate for the second time with respect to x what would i get if i differentiate for the second time with respect to x it's going to be pretty simple see here uh, the second and the third terms get knocked out and the first term becomes 12x so therefore uh, constructing my hesian is going to be very very easy so the first one is going to be 12x and uh, similarly let us see what i am going to get for uh, the second derivative of y so this is my first derivative of y and if i uh, differentiate uh, this with respect to y further i'll get 12x and uh, minus uh, 18y okay so this i am going to i am differentiating with respect to y so i'll get 12x here and 18 minus 18y so uh i'm going to write here 12x minus 18y 
and now i need the mixed derivative only once if i evaluate any one of them i will be able to get my mixed derivative let me choose the first term if i evaluate the first uh, term that is if i differentiate the first term with respect to y because i have already differentiated with respect to x so therefore if i differentiate the first uh, equation with respect to y this uh, gets uh, knocked out this gets knocked out what you are going to get is just the 12y right so my mixed derivative is also evaluated 12y and uh, this is also going to be 12y and if i Uh, evaluate the determinant of it because i want to understand the nature whenever you have got points with the uh, same numbers but opposite sign you will have to understand the nature of the determinant so that you don't have to evaluate for all the set of points okay one set of points if you evaluate it's going to be enough I in a while you will find out if i find the determinant what it's going to be it's going to be 12 into 12 144 x square and you can see here 12 into 18 into xy it's going to be minus 216 xy and uh, minus 144 y square so minus 144 y square now look at uh, the nature of uh, this particular expression you see here it is homogeneous in the sense uh, uh, you can see x power 1 y power 1 the total is 2 this is also y square this is also x square that means whether you put minus x it's an even expression i would say uh, it is not odd so when i put uh, uh, x equal to uh, x uh, minus x value or plus x value minus y value plus y value that means when i put minus x minus y as first point and second point as plus x plus y this is going to give you the same result because uh, Minus x whole square is x square. Whether it is plus or minus doesn't matter. Minus y or plus y whole square, the same value. And x into y, whether it is minus minus or plus plus, it doesn't matter. So it is very very categorical that you will have to evaluate the determinant only twice. Why? Go back and see what points you got. This is uh, numerically both of them are same. Only thing is this has got negative. Numerically both of them are same. Only thing is you have got minus sign. So if you evaluate for one of the points and one of the points here, you are done. Your job is very easy. So that is uh, what you have to be very vigilant of. Now finally, what we have done is we have evaluated uh, for uh, the points. As we said, we are evaluating the determinant for these two set, and we are evaluating the determinant for these two set. for these two set you can see that the determinant turns out to be negative all that you got to do is substitute for x equal to minus 3 and y equal to minus 4 or if you choose you can choose x equal to 3 and y equal to 4 you can do either of the substitution you end up with the same determinant that is because you have got a square term square term and product so whether you put uh, minus minus or plus plus you will get the same determinant So now, since you got the negative determinant, this is uh, not uh, a case of interest because that obviously points to the saddle point. And what about the next one? That is five comma zero minus five comma zero. Here also, you can use either plus uh, y uh, plus uh, five and zero, uh, plus five for x and zero for y, or you can use uh, minus five comma zero, which is obviously it's going to be. Three thousand six hundred. It is pretty easy. You can see here one forty four into five square, and rest goes to zero because that involves y. So five comma zero, you get the positive determinant. So this is uh, the point that you are interested. Now you want to find out whether it is maximum or minimum. How the maximum and minimum is going to be determined? They are solely determined by the principal diagonal element terms. Now if I put Phi comma zero. This becomes plus sixty, and this also becomes plus sixty. What does that point to? Minima. When both of them are positive, you are getting minima. But if I say um, um, I am going to substitute minus phi comma zero, both of them will become minus sixty minus sixty. What does it uh, point to? Maxima. When both of the, the second derivatives are negative, you are talking about maxima. When both of them are positive, you are talking about minima. and if i substitute 5 comma 0 in the original expression that is 
x cube plus 6xy square and minus 3y cube minus 150x very very easy expression to evaluate and now uh, if I s use phi comma 0 as uh, the uh, value to substitute here this is going to be 2 into 125 because 5 cube is 125 wherever y is involved those terms simply go uh, to 0 they are out of question so minus this is uh, going to be 150 into 5 this is minus uh, uh, 750 and this is 250 so minus 500 so the positive phi comma 0 since it makes both these uh, principal diagonal elements positive that has to give you minimum which is minus 500 so the negative phi comma 0 that should give you the maximum because uh, what happens in this uh, term itself you can evaluate because anyway these two terms don't contribute since there is minus 150 because you are going to substitute minus 5 this is going to turn plus 150 since it's a cube term what happens uh, when you put x equal to minus 5 it becomes minus 125 so the situation simply reverses this is minus 250 and plus 750 and what is going to be our maximum value 500 right so though the function is not symmetric one of the things that you learned is that uh, you could get points for which you had to investigate maximum minima were numerically same but with opposite sign so there you had to investigate the determinant of the hazian for one of the points either phi comma 0 or minus phi comma 0 or 3 comma 4 or minus 3 comma minus 4 